Hey, it's Benji Cole, son of Al Cole from CBS Radio and host of People of Distinction. The talk that gives an in-depth view of some of the most dynamic, intelligent, and successful people on the planet. Run to our website, peopleofdistinction.org, for more info. Or you can always email me directly at benji at alcoholenterprises.com. And on the line with us today, we have Dr. Bill Champagne. We're going to be discussing his amazing book, Freddy the Fish Goes to School. Now, it's available for purchase through Amazon as well as barnesandnoble.com. And before we go any further, I do want to quickly point out that Dr. Champagne was brought to our network by one of the best advertising firms in the business. And of course, I'm talking about pen to paper press. So listen to me. If you're a writer out there and you have a work of art that you've created but you need help moving it, well, give yourself the best gift you could possibly give. Contact pen to paper and have their wonderful team help you do just that. They're one of the best in the business to do it, and this is what they specialize in. So do me a favor, and really do yourself the favor, and head on over to pentapaperpress.com today and gather all of the ways that they're going to help maximize your creative endeavors. And listen, it is a true pleasure to have Dr. Champagne here on the line. Now, aside from just a catchy title, the moment you head on over to Amazon, Barnes & Noble, you start to do research on his book, you're going to understand what you're in store for. So for my parents out there, this is a narrative you're going to want to get your hands on, okay? Because this is a fantastic, fun journey that you're going to be able to embark upon with your children. Now, right there in the title, it's going to tell you a bit about what you need to know, but the underlying message that all of your children out there are going to be able to take from it is really the emphasis on staying focused and completing the task at hand. And for anybody out there that has children, you understand how difficult that may be to do. So this is a wonderful narrative that has a powerful message underneath, not only about going to school, but really, as I mentioned, just about completing any tasks. Because we understand, and listen, some adults out there can also understand how difficult staying focused can be from time to time. This is a wonderful book, a valuable resource, and at the end of the day, don't take my word for it. Take Dr. Champagne's. He's written it. He's done the research. And he's going to be able to articulate everything much better than I ever could. So sit back, strap in, and get ready for a wonderful ride. Dr. Champagne, first and foremost, welcome to People of Distinction, and thank you very much for being a guest. How are you doing today, sir? I'm outstanding, and thank you for that wonderful introduction. Absolutely. Well, listen, you know, you started it, okay? You had to lay down a wonderful (laughs) foundation and set that roadmap up for me to follow. So thank you for writing it. And again, thank you for being a guest here to discuss it. I think what you're doing here is special and is something that's really needed, okay? Now, before we go into the book and before we learn about your writing process, Dr. Champagne, tell us a little bit more about yourself, please. Well, uh, let me see. I'm a, I'm a doctor of education. Mm-hmm. I'm uh, located in Philadelphia, and I have, uh, I have three children. And one of the things that, that we used to do uh, when, when my children were younger, we used to just tell stories all the time. Yeah. And our, our storytelling led to Freddie the Fish and some of the other things that, uh, that some of the other stories that we're developing, developing now. So it's been a, it's been a pleasure to do so. But it really comes from a sense of family. Uh, it comes from a sense of community. I work in the uh, mental health field in Philadelphia, as well as uh, working on, on a project that, that try to bring communities together. So the, the whole theme of not getting distracted and staying together and working with family has just always been very important to me. Love that. Dr. Champagne, I love that origin story. Thank you very much for articulating it. And people, you know, given his background, the the underlying message is something that's coming from a knowledgeable place. This man has lived the background of education and really has formulated a great way on how to get that across to his readers and to your children. So I love that. He is an absolute embodiment of a person of distinction. So let's jump right in. Freddie the Fish goes to school without giving too much away here, Dr. Champagne. Give us a brief synopsis of your narrative. Well, essentially the narrative, it it starts off with family. So we have a mother and a father and two children. And the goal of the the day, this particular day, is to make sure that they get to school. Mm Mm-hmm. And 
they have a reason that they want to go to school, and that 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 resonates throughout the book. They're, they're going to school for a reason to avoid some other things. Yeah. And on the way, they are challenged by things that might seem outrageous. But as you know, uh, as an adult, we know that some things that do pull us off the track are outrageous when we look back at it. Mm -hmm. We end up being exactly what Freddie and his sister don't want to end up being. So it's a good way to tie in not only just a, a, a cool story for kids, but also a great message for adults as well. You know, let's talk about your writing process and your writing background here for a bit. What sacrifices did you make to pursue a career in writing, and do you believe that they were worth it? Well, I'll start with the last question, which is, uh, of course, it's worth it. Anytime, anytime you get to contribute, anytime you get to, to, to bring any type of clarity or healing or togetherness, it's definitely worth it. Mm-hmm. And the sacrifices, truth be told, aren't really that great. I mean, you sacrifice time. Uh, but the creative process makes the time go a little bit quicker. And the sacrifices that you also make are, <clears throat> are getting out of your own head and moving yourself out of the way. So you kind of have to sacrifice the, the typical mindset that you have on a daily basis of limitation and move into the world of being unlimited in thought process and what it is that you can contribute and what it is that people need, how you can become a uh, somewhat of a healer in the situation that you're in. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, some words of wisdom here for any writers out there listening in, but I want to hear it from you in your process. Can you discuss a time when you you faced writer's block and how you overcame it? Uh, Yeah, I have faced writer's block before, and, and, and how I've overcome it is through relaxation. One of the things that I've incorporated, uh, is is a meditation process. So I make sure I get that in every day. The other thing that I've done, the other thing that I do to overcome writer's block in with uh, children's books is just being around children. I have children, grandchildren, and I listen to the way that we can sit down and just make up a story. We can make up a rhyme. We can make up, <clears throat> we make up stories. We do different things and play games. And it just helps you relax because it eases the tension between trying to actually produce a product and have some fun. Mm -hmm. You know, I know we started to go over this a little bit with regards to your book, but is there a particular theme or message that you strive to convey through your writing in general? And if so, Dr. Champagne, how do you ensure that it resonates with the readers? I think the number one message for me is that uh, we belong together. I think the uh, the overall message is that together we can get done whatever we need to get done. Mm-hmm. Uh, together we can solve problems, and um, families become stronger that way. So family is a big is a big thing for me. That's the reason why you know I include in this book the mother, the father, the sister, the brother, and the understanding that they they move together. The overall theme again is how do we actually get things done and making sure that we do them, you know, in a group. People, again, we're here on the line with Dr. Bill Champagne. We're discussing his book, Freddy the Fish Goes to School. Again, it's available for purchase through Amazon as well as barnesandnoble.com. You know, sticking with your writing process here, Dr. Champagne, how do you handle self-doubt and maintain confidence in your writing abilities? Because I know that's a big one, and that's something that, listen, it's going to pertain to writing but that's something that we can take across the spectrum. So talk to us a little bit more about how you handle that. That's a, that's a great question. Self, self-doubt self is something that uh, a lot of us are faced with from, from time to time. And for me, I've, had, I've definitely had periods of self-doubt. What I do is reflect upon not what how I feel about myself, but what it is that I'm obligated to do. So self-doubt to me is, is often overcome by a feeling of obligation, like whether you doubt it or not, you still have to do it. And you know, sometimes you can tell yourself, you 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 know, I think I can, I think again, that, the process. But I also think of, I know I have to. So self-doubt has to take kind of a backseat to more of an obligation. Mm. You know, can you describe a moment when you felt a deep emotional connection to your work? And 
how did it influence your writing or your future projects? Well, that's a good, that's a good question too, Benji. Um, I always feel a deep connection to my work because a lot of the situations that I write about or things that I present are things that I've experienced. So the, the emotional connection, is, especially in this book, as far as being distracted, I've been distracted before. Yeah. And I've and I've seen and I've seen the results of it, and I realize what type of time and how difficult it is to get back on track. So if you can avoid those things from the beginning and realize the difference between what's a distraction and what's what's really needs to be done, that's important. So there is a there is a deep emotional connection in that regard, just from living living life. Mm-hmm. On, on a day-to-day basis and realizing sometimes you know, you want to you want to take time to do this or do that but having your priorities in, a, in order really help you get the job done a lot more efficiently yeah you know talking about your background here i want to connect the dots for our listening audience and really for myself as well dr champagne but your background is of course in education as you said right that's you, you have you received a doctorate in education what inspired yeah. you to become a writer, though? I mean, and, and how has writing impacted your life on a personal level? You know, that's okay. So I always, I always wanted to write. I always felt like I had something to say. And if if I can just leapfrog back to the question that you that you asked before, I always thought I had something to say, but I but self doubt was there. So at some point in time. I, I had to overcome that and say, listen, this, this, this has to come out. And, and I just happened to find a way of doing it through children's books. But that's the, uh, that, that, that was, that's the main theme of it for me. The self-doubt actually propelled me to say, let's, let's get this thing out and let's have a gift. And also from, you know, I was a, I was a man who was blessed with wonderful parents as well. And, and my parents motivated me, they inspired me, and they encouraged me. So I used, you know, organic inspiration that was right in the household to, to get things done. How do you personally balance your writing career with your personal life and relationships? Because I'm sure it's quite the juggle. <laughs> How about that? Personal life, relationships, writing career, uh, work well, I'm just I'm just wonderfully blessed. So the balance is is not that difficult for me with family because my family is just very supportive. I have a wonderful wife who supports all of my endeavors. So that really helps, and I'm able to ask, you know, for time or space when when it's necessary, and that 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 helps a lot. Mm-hmm. But also, I'm, I'm let me tell you one, one thing about me. I'm a really really blessed guy because everything that I do, I like. I like my work. I like you know my job. I lo- I love writing. I love communicating. I love teaching. So it doesn't feel like that much of a strain for me because I don't I'm engaged in things that I like all throughout the day. How do you manage self care? and maintain your mental and emotional well-being as a writer. Because listen, people, I know that this is, we're going through the writing process because anybody that's been through it understands that there is a juggle. I mean, really, we're talking specifically about writing, but this applies to artists. This applies to life. And there is so much wisdom in the words that he is discussing here. So when it comes to managing self-care, maintaining your mental and emotional well-being, That's a lot because you can deal with a lot of adversity. You deal with a lot of criticism depending on your situation. So there's a lot coming at you. But Dr. Champagne, talk to us about how you potentially manage all of that. Well, I'm going to tell you exactly what I do. I don't know if people agree or disagree. But one of the things that I do is when I wake up in the morning time, I don't engage with anyone before I do my affirmations. I have a solid time where I affirm exactly what it is that I want before I touch the cell phone or check an email or anything else. What I do is I create the day that I want before I begin to engage in it. At nighttime, what I do is I always end up my evening times with the meditation. So I I have a routine that kind of shields me from a lot of outside influences or distractions. The other thing that I've done is 
believe it or not, I take in very, very little news. Hey, I don't hear the news or listen to the news. I, I might overhear it because someone else is talking about it. And what I find is that when I do engage in the news or the news cycle, it is a distraction to me because then I begin to talk about things that I, I don't want or things that I don't want to engage in. And I just take very, very, I'm very careful about what I allow myself to listen to or hear or discuss. So being careful with words is a, is a tremendous self-care tool that I learned and it keeps a lot of stress and distraction and distress out of my life. Mm. There you have. Listen, I love that advice. And I think that that, listen, it works for you. And I know that so many people are going to be able to take that and run with it because it's going to work for them as well. Getting to something else that I think is of, of grave importance here, Dr. Champagne, how do you believe that the power of storytelling can shape our understanding of reality in, in a grander scale, help influence society? Well, <clears throat> I think everything, everything is a story, life story, his story, mm -hmm. <laughs> your story, my story. Stories are how we transmit knowledge, how we, how we share information, how we review the past, how we look at history and experience. So storytelling is, is I don't know if there's anything more powerful than the power of story. Yeah. So being able to engage in, in that and articulate stories and, share stories and convey stories that family traditions are passed down and opinions and a lot of things have, have happened, powerful things because of story. So I think if you're able to articulate a story that, that resonates with people, especially if it produces a, a higher level of emotion like, you know, love or peace or joy or, or bliss or happiness or power and gets people to, to tap into those things, those types of things resonate with people. And if you're able to maintain those stories over time, you have a profound effect on people. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And as we start to close out of this fantastic interview, Dr. Champagne, we have gotten so many gems from you today. And I appreciate it so much, as I know my listening audience does as well. But if you can communicate a single message to all of your readers through your body of work, what would that message be? I think the, a, the single message would be uh, let's let's get together, right? Mm -hmm. And then once we get together, let's let's stay together. I, I, I think that one of the, the message for me is that the, the things that separate us aren't as powerful as the, as the reasons we should be united. And the books that, that I'm working on and, and, and Freddie Fisher are, are about that message. Power of togetherness is much more beneficial for us and more powerful and more lasting than anything that could take us in, in opposite directions. Yeah. So that, that would be that would be the message for me. Let's get together. And once we get together, let, let's stay together. Listen, that's a message that we can get behind. That's a message that we constantly talk about here through people of distinction. People you hear us say it so often. There is much more that connects us than separates us. And the Indeed. moment we start to realize that as a society is the moment we are on the right track. Because I firmly believe that that is going to help dismantle so many obstacles and really barriers of division that we have set up and that we have constructed throughout our human family. I love that message. And as we close out, really something that I've been thinking about, because <laughs> Dr. Champagne, I'm going to tell you, man, everything that you're talking about, although your book, Freddie the Fish Goes to School, is a children's narrative, the messages that you have relayed to our listening audience today could be for all ages, right? I mean, it, it, there's nothing that confines this to a certain age group, although you've written for children. So curiosity for myself as we close out, what made you decide to write children's books? Basically, just for the reason that you just stated, I write, write books for children who are, who still need a story read to them. Hmm. So this gives the parents a chance to teach to engage in that reflexive relationship with the child where they're learning from the child as well. Yeah. 
where the parent can hear that message and have it resonate in his and her head, where they can have a child receive a message and reflect it back to the parent where they realize, you know what, I have an obligation to do exactly what this book is telling and entertaining my child to do. So I think that it's just a it's just a uh, a great relationship with between a parent and child. And I'm a guy who loves children. So being able to, you know, there's some of the best teachers that we have. I say that they are, we protect them, but they actually raise us. So children have a way of bringing us to a high level of consciousness. And then we can put something into their lives that they can look back on and say, hey, there was a message there. A great father and son, father, daughter, mother, child relationship where you're sitting there reading together. Again, it just promotes that, that level of togetherness. And together we can learn and we can grow and build, and everybody has an opportunity to flourish. Mm -hmm. You know, Dr. Champagne, we know about this fantastic book. We know about your past. Well, I'm focusing on the future. Now, please tell me that you have more upcoming. What's on the horizon for you? Oh, that, that's, we have some exciting things on the horizon. We have Freddy the Fish Goes Out to Play. We have Freddy the Fish Meets Boona, the Lion Tuna. <laughs> and we have Freddy the Fish meets Slater, the Do It Later Gator. Each one of these things, each one of these books have, of course, a theme similar to not getting distracted. It's about handicap. It's about it's about uh, procrastination, and it's also about being untruthful. Really powerful themes in in adults as well as children. So mm -hmm. yeah, they're, they're, I'm, we're excited about those, and we're looking at should be out the next six months with the publisher now people listen if this interview hasn't moved you you need to wake up okay you're gonna get passed by this is something that is special for so many reasons listen it starts with freddie the fish goes to school but be on the lookout for dr champagne because he has some wisdom to offer and we're hoping that there is much more on the horizon because you're going to be able to take advantage of all of it. But for the time being, Amazon and Barnes & Noble are where you have to go. I said it before. I'll say it again. Freddie the Fish Goes to School is the title you have to pick up. And Dr. Bill Champagne is the author you have to thank for bringing this wonderful narrative to your table. It starts with your children. I mean, you know, it's the old cliche. and We've heard it a million times. Children are the future. So let's shape them correctly. Let's start them off on the right foot and imagine the world that we'll have tomorrow if we all operate from this, from this perspective of unity, from this perspective of, of love and compassion and empathy. My goodness. <laughs> Listen, there, there's something for everyone, okay? I know it's a children's narrative, but for my adults out there, you're going to be able to take so much from this as well. So head on over there today, pick up your copies, a wonderful book to add to your shelf, an even better gift to add to someone else's. Dr. Champagne, this has been a true pleasure, man, an absolute delight. Thank you once again for being a guest on People of Distinction. Thank you so much. You are uh, a gifted guy, man. <laughs> you are a gifted guy. You made it much easier than I thought it was going to be, and I appreciate that. 